Jets hydrogen. This is not my usual thing that I make videos about, but this is a Starship coil, and I've got it floating. Isn't that neat? And for you two sides, it's floating over one of my MRM modules that I made. See it floating? Isn't that neat? But, Off of here. You see it doesn't work now. This is copper wire. This is magnet wire. This is a, a magnet. Look, I can pick this thing up. Look at that. Okay. Now what I'll do is, is I'm going to unplug it. So I'll come over here and I'll unplug it. And I'll come back over here and I'll watch. It doesn't stick anymore. Okay. Isn't that neat? Whoa. The magnet in my toolbox got real friendly. So I've been playing around with uh, these Starship coils. I made a speaker out of one and did a lot of different weird things. But I can actually, uh, I can actually make them float. And so, um, kind of a poor man's UFO. My son used this for a science project for school. And, you know, uh, obviously, uh, jaws dropped. It worked really well. Uh, what I got going on now is I'm running my hydrogen cell with uh, MRM modules, the magnetic resonance modules. What these are, these are stacked up magnets with uh, wire wrapped around them. The wire is uh, magnet wire, which you can get from Radio Shack. These had eight uh, magnets in it. The magnets that are in there are these little ferrite magnets you can buy off of eBay. About 66 bucks for a hundred of them. Matter of fact, the field in here is so strong, I can feel it in my fingers from holding this magnet, especially when I get close to this. This thing is nuts over here. Yeah, uh, man, I, I just flipped the magnet over. Watch this. You will get into the field. Look at that. I'll just show just a little bit of the start here. You've got to see. So you wound this up, right? Now it's got a hovering this is not my usual thing. Uh, over a magnet. Uh, this is a starship coil, and I've uh, got it floating. He gave it to his kid to take the screw to show everybody that they're all done and had a gobble snack. There's a magnet under here, though. Yeah, sure, it's just kind of... Let's just Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many sizes is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 sizes. That's your number. It's out of sync there. Mm -hmm. 11. Anything with 11 is out of sync. Uh, these starship coils. I made a speaker out of one and yeah, we got a lot of different ways. Right? Uh, and it pulls it back to four up on the four so, one um, Kind of a poor man's UFO. My son. Yeah, I'll show you this thing here. He's built. A pretty decent field. Um, I won't tell you what this is, okay. but it is connected to my hydrogen cell. So I'm going to start you out on these. These things are running a square wave through them. This magnet is great. Now this is a magnet. It's just it's a magnet. 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 It's and uh, you can get these online, just look them up. This is what's used for ultrasonic cleaners. This thing is actually putting out 16.45 volts AC. Look at my pipe just coming out of the bag. Okay. Yeah. And the frequency, you're just going to have to play with. Um, 
Yes, she was very good. Well, we were on him at the time, too. Got some pretty good ideas. I'll let you know in some of the future videos. I just want to open something up. Look, this is a new fuel for hydrogen, okay? This is something that I haven't seen explored at all by anybody else on YouTube or anywhere else. These are, I'm putting magnetic resonance into a hydrogen cell, and look at the output at 20 amps. See how fast that gas is going through there? Can you see that? That's really good. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm not jerking your chain. I'm not trying to sell nothing. I'm just telling people uh, I think we need to start playing with this stuff. And, um, you know, my amperage is okay. I, I'm at 24 amps. So that's not bad output. What I'm shooting for, and this is my goal, okay, is I want to have a hydrogen cell that you put tap water in, and that's it, okay? No electrolyte, no distilled water, put tap water in a sucker, and it'll run. Um, I know I'm supposed to have some certain things in the water. I've been researching it hard. Uh, one of them is I'm supposed to have ions in the water. And so what I'm shooting for is to be able to either put ions into the water, or I'm going to have an electrolyte that is created inside the cell, okay? And uh, I'll get into detail on that as soon as I figure out, if, you know, what I'm going to do. Yeah, but um, cell, right? if I do this and create this cell, then I will be the only person on the planet that has a hydrogen cell that runs on straight tap water. And that's what my goal is. Okay, guys, uh, here is an MR module, the guts of it. As you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, put these together any way you want and play with them. Either this side is all north, this side is all south, and then you put a, a glue, epoxy on, use goop, whatever you want. Or you could do north, north, south, south, or all these are north, all these are south. Play with it, man. Just, just play with it. Wrap it with uh, paper tape all the way across. Run uh, magnet wire this way like a guitar pickup, about uh, 30 to 60 turns. On this side, you can run your uh, wire run a little bit here, run a little bit in the middle, run a little bit here, you know, 40, 60, 80 turns. Um, I would suggest probably like 32 gauge. Dude, this magnet is wanting to get his pulling towards this thing. This is nuts, dude. Dang. Yeah, I'm going to show you nuts. something. Wait. I just don't think I'm jerking your chain. But... How far back I'm going from this thing. Whoa, man, I'm back like, here we go. I'm back like four, about three, four foot. Let's try this one. This one just has the red light. Let me get on the red light. I don't know if you can see the red light or not. There you go, right there. No, you can't see doodly. Look at this one. Oh, that was red light, red light, still red light, still danger, still danger. Whoa, there it is, right there is the last of the red light, and I am really far from that thing. That is creating a very, very powerful um, magnetic field. I'm about, probably about three and a half, maybe four feet away from this thing. Very strong field coming out of this stinker. So there you go, advanced hydrogen, doing something that I hope will revolutionize and change hydrogen. You may be seeing hydrogen history right here, folks. <laughs> Maybe. What do you think of that? Amazing. Now, um, do you want to mention, um, as we've got this rolling, um, how the numbers come about? You're reading the uh, Lost Books of Eden and you got the Adam story and then uh, the 11th chapter, wasn't it? The uh, story is uh, oh, well, 5500 five, zero, zero years. Yeah, yeah. Adam God fell, Adam the, fell the first hour. Uh, he, he, he only lasted one hour in the garden. And the promise was that he, um, that God, would send his word who would become, that he himself would come down and be known as the Son of Man and the Word of God. And, uh, but the time till then would be 5,500 years. And it was covenanted, which means it could not be broken. So the, Adam was expelled from the garden 
And it was Adam's fault because Adam, of course, had been given the commandment by God, which was the only commandment, which was not to eat from that particular tree. Eve had not even been created. And so it was Adam's fault that they were expelled from the garden. Of course, they, had to, they were in, then in a strange land because before the expulsion, he had a body that was glorious and had no need of uh, water, food or anything because he was covered with the glory of God and his skin, everything uh, was light. However, after the fall and uh, Eve had already been made, obviously, and she was the one who didn't know the commandment and she was beguiled by the serpent who at that time was a glorious being. But Adam was with her and he ate as well. So, there's no escaping. Adam cannot pass the buck, even though he tried to, this woman that you gave me. It was entirely his fault because Eve wasn't there to receive the commandment and she was entirely innocent. However, she took it upon herself. Later, she she uh, she cried under the guilt of what she did, yet God... Let's not put her at a moment. Yeah, yeah. We're anyway. talking to a scientific audience. We're interested in the numbers. All right. Not 5, the brittle that goes along with it. 5,500 years. Right. They're Hebrew years of 360 days and Mayan So what's the math? Years. I'll do the math here. The math is... All right. The rescue for Adam comes with the word of God. 5,500 years has to pass before that rescue. From the rebirth day of the Christ, January 11th, 1944, 5,500 Hebrew years, or when converted to Gregorian years, the calendar we're now operating in, it's 5,421 Gregorian years. When is that the number? 5421 plus... Oh, that, is that the number there? 5500. Not, not thousand, 5500. I've got my glasses on. Yes. Three, times 365. Sorry, 360. Because they're Hebrew years. And Mayan. Okay, now, divided by 365.2424 to give you Gregorian years. Add on the 69 years, now that's to your rebirth date, yeah. add on the 69 years coming up on your 69th birthday, and it gives you 5490 Gregorian years. 5490 in Greek means chasm an impassable chasm, which is what Adam was confined to. He could not cross back into paradise. He was confined to hell, which is... He had no re-entry back into the Garden of Paradise until the end of the 5,500 years com, um, covenanted by God. So how much am I adding on here? This is uh, January 18th, 3478 yes. BC. Yes, right. so, so that means that Adam was created on January the 18th, 3478. Now 3478 is Nazarene and it is also Brian's Commonwealth bank card pin number, 3478, that the angels orchestrated. He did not choose that. It's the Nazarene. Now, as it turned out, I had to. I had an appointment today, and they've made another appointment for me after discovering all of this last night. And they randomly select the date that my next appointment would be, January the 18th. Now, we've got Julian Day 45111001826.4, which is the same time of day that I was born on January 11th, 1944. So, therefore, the Lord Day is that same moment in time, 2.22 in the morning. Yes. Right, on the yeah, 11th of January. So, um, to get that number, what do we add to that to bring it forward in time? Well, you add the... Uh, you 
Now it'll be now add your two what is it two, twenty five thousand two hundred days to that. Um, now was that no, see what happens two zero zero five. Because that's the Revelation 3.12, right? That was the Jamata Albert times 10, 25.20 times 10, yeah. which is this your age. gives you the 8th of January, 2013. Right. And you get your three days, right? Yeah. So there you go, madam. So it takes you back to the creation date of the 18th. To my birthday. Twice. The verse which has the Revelation 3.12, which has the value of that number we just put in, 2520. Put a zero on it, that's 69 years. Or 70 Hebrew years. Or 70 Hebrew years, which is the book of Daniel. The missing mm. week. Mm. That's right. And the numbers we were doing yesterday were all to do with the uh, number of Daniel. So, uh, Adam is allowed to go back into paradise. And his righteous seed. He's only his righteous seed. Get in. At this point on the earth? I haven't found it, man. No. Well, there's a, a few. It's from, um, well, we've got, got, we got our saints. Yes, the saints. In a population of 7 billion. Well, we've got all the milk and all the kids. Mm. Kids don't have enough friends. Yeah. I mean, these little kids growing up and all they've heard about is war all their life. Yes, oh my God, yes. There's their true king comes along and they are related to him spiritually now. Mm. And are given the uh, keys of heaven. Mm. I certainly don't want to put any more of this crap they got on going on tonight. No. Threats of bloody war. So we're talking about corrupted and perverted uh, adults. Right. Of which there are very few. That's right. That will make it. Yep. And uh, the entire point is that the covenant cannot be broken. No matter how much Adam pled for uh, forgiveness and mercy and he was forgiven other things, Satan tempted him so many times and, and because they were literally innocent children, and they were beguiled by the one who hates all mankind, who Yahweh has been saying all along, the purpose of the enemy has to annihilate Adam, to kill Adam and all of his offspring. And that's what, uh, so Satan comes along, disguises himself as the uh, bearer of light and all of its angels and promises all kinds of things, power, position, eternal life, but he cannot and from the beginning told them that he would not keep his word whereas God has always kept his word so the covenant cannot be broken so bottom line is God on the earth as man um, is here to take Adam and the children and the meek the righteous adults into that realm of paradise that was lost and everybody else remains outside, cannot enter. Well, that's it. So, D-Day is um, January the 11th, 2013 at 2.22 a.m. Sydney time. Two weeks notice, it's 14 days. 14 days from now.
It's a Friday. It's a Friday. How appropriate. Creation Day. Mm. January 18th was a Friday. Oh, that's right. Mm. And a uh, uh, creation of Adam. Right. That is my appointment. <laughs> my appointment is Friday. Oh, of course it is, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that's a good run then. An appointment in paradise. What would you like to call that? Uh, D-Day. 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 D-Day.